Hi guys and welcome to an all new episode of Car Talk. Today we have with us Mohammed and Ahmed from uh, Motion Arabia. We're going to be talking to them about a few of the cars they own. Uh, hey, hi. So, Mohammed and Ahmed, thank you guys for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, we're very excited and let me just start off by saying we absolutely love the work that you guys yes. do at Motion Arabia. I'll, I'll... I was going to start with that. You are one of my favorite like social media outlets out there. Just let me start with that. That's a uh, big word. I mean, uh, that's what keeps us going. Because yeah. your, your, your content is light on the soul, man. You just like one minute of like full engagement, excitement, beauty, whatever it is you're doing. And I'm... Um, I'm just like, you see a smile on my face every time I'm scrolling down Instagram and I just pass through one of your posts. So well, we're glad a, you like a, it. Yeah. Why don't so we start with a small introduction? I mean, Mohammed, tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe the car you own, and then we'll go on to Ahmed, and then you guys can just introduce Motion Arabia and tell us what's the goal behind it. All, all right. So um, for everybody, I'm uh, Mohammed Khalifa, part of Motion Arabia. Um, my story is very simple. I've, I've loved cars. I've loved uh, creating content or just being artistic since I was a child. And uh, slowly by slowly in my life, I started, you know, like realizing that, hey, why don't I mash up these things together? And uh, ever since I decided that, it's been like, what, five, four years, and I ended up with the result of Motion Arabia. We've been going for three years now. Personally, as Mohammed, I'm a person who is a very outdoor person. Uh, I've lived my entire life in the desert and the sea and stuff like that. So naturally, um, my cars have always been 4x4, four four, has to have 4x4. Four four. And if it didn't have 4x4, four four, it will still go in the desert anyway, <laughs> shape or form. Um, I bought my uh, Dodge Charger SRT8. It was my first you know, big car that I would buy like as an achievement. Uh, it has like over 200,000 on the mileage because it was going everywhere with it. Uh, even off-roading. Got... Even off-roading. <laughs> Trust me, he goes off-roading the charger. <laughs> uh, the, that and that got... V, V8 helps. <laughs> yeah. oh. By the way, by the way, like no joke, the, the amount of horsepower it has makes it more capable in a lot of places that other 4 by 4s can. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we have the Jimny, my latest uh, car that I got, uh, Jimny. Funny story is I bought the Jimny because the Dodge broke down. So it was <laughs> the funnest and cheapest option to get. Uh, but it, it was something amazing because Jimny is a completely different experience. Very capable, very practical, very fun. So that's, more, that's all about Mohammed. <laughs> okay, uh, I am Mohammed Barrala. I'm part of uh, Motion Arabia team. Uh, I'm the, one of the videographers and editors of Motion Arabia. Um, so uh, we start, uh, Motion Arabia started, uh, I guess, three, three years back. And uh, we all started as a team, as, a, as friends. And uh, what, um, I knew Mohammed from college. So uh, we studied uh, filming, uh, applied communications and media. And then, uh, so we had the thing uh, between us. So like uh, one of uh, like we, we loved cars and filming. So uh, then we all uh, like uh, came together with the with the team and uh, we started filming cars. And now uh, Motion Arabia is a company. So uh, Alhamdulillah, and uh, and um, what I do, what I drive is uh, I drive an FJ Cruiser. Mm -hmm. of uh, lifted fj cruiser okay as fj cruiser there are stories that will never end about this fj cruiser it is has that seen... the one is that the one you jumped yes <laughs> it's the one that jumps <laughs> uh, uh, yani, mashallah, mashallah, FJ, I, because of ahmed i believe that is it is an indestructible car <laughs> he's, prov he's proven it Living so uh, yes <laughs> So I love going off-roading a lot every weekend, maybe like, uh, yeah, twice a week, I guess. Uh, sometimes with Muhammad, sometimes alone. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so I drive an FJ Cruiser. Okay. So can you 
maybe let's start with Muhammad and then move to Ahmed. I, I want to know more about like, where did the idea of Motion Arabia come from and uh, how you crystallize it and what's the goal of it? Like if you want to say the goal of Motion Arabia in one sentence, what is it? So let's start okay. with you, Muhammad. I'll, I'll start uh, with your first question, which is how did it start? And uh, Motion Arabia uh, is, I think maybe if it's not clear on social media, but it's a very mushy very friendly, very family kind of entity. It started one night, we were sitting together as friends, we we're like five or six people, and we we're like, yeah, have you seen that guy? He does amazing videos and he just goes, and, and at that point, like five years ago, there wasn't really a lot of people who would just create artistic content. It was very straightforward reviews, and at that time, like the only prominent figures were Arab Jiti and uh, Ali Hamoudi. Uh, and they were both just very review oriented. It's not a lot of people who, you know, and then there's like some people here and there, but it's just review, 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 review. So we're like, why can't we see, why can't we just enjoy how the car looks like? And we started film. we, we filmed a GTR for, for one of our friends, Rashid Ma'alla. He's also Ahmed Nashash and Ali's friend. Um, and then you know, we started contacting companies and at that point when we started Motion Arabia, nobody really cared. They're like, you know, who are you? Why, why should we give you a car? Um, and that was the start, okay? Uh, fast forward three years later, um, what is our goal? Uh, we do have a goal internally and it is to be a production house, of niche for cars, obviously. We want to be an entertainment. So our inspiration for this is stuff like car throttle, donut media, you know, these very young um, oriented car sources. And then third of all, uh, which was the last focus for Motion Arabia was being a community. And I'm pretty sure you guys know that we have uh, Karak nights before Corona, obviously. <laughs> Karak nights, meetups, uh, go-kart nights. We wanted to be something that people can touch you know not like oh from far away they're looking at us on social media i wanted it to be something that they can talk to us um the goal for motion arabia is to continue building on our talents and our first you know ambitions and the things that we're developing every day we want to end up being uh, a very reliable production house uh, for a lot of brands to come to we also want to at the same time provide entertainment whether now we're doing it through like behind the scenes and some things here and there but very close in the future inshallah we're gonna start being more consistent and stuff like podcast shows um what else uh, i forgot like um uh, i forgot like we have so many ideas though the there's a lot of ideas is, yeah <laughs> i mean with motion arabia it's a pretty young entity so yeah. we're still in the phase of hey, how about this, how about that? We can do this, we can do that. And it has helped us open many doors. Uh, but I think يعني, in the five-year mark, I think we'll solidify as what we are. And I think it's going to be more of a, um, a very diverse hub for car content, whether serious, not serious, people coming to us for production, community, stuff like that. Cool. Uh, and what, what about for you, Ahmed? How can you uh, like tell us what Motion Arabia is for you? Well, Mohammed said it all. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to add something. Uh, to me, Motion Arabia is like a uh, family. Um, so uh, all the team, uh, the team that ends, it's in motion. Hello? Yep, go on. Yeah, yeah we yeah, can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, to, to flagged. Anyways. So uh, Motion Arabia is, is, is like a family. Um, we are all uh, friends before uh, joining this team. And uh, the, what I like about Motion Arabia is that we all plan together. We put all the ideas together. We, we, go, we go, we have like a straight line. We all walk in the same straight line. And we have the same goal and same idea. And uh, that's, um, that's, uh, that's how Motion Arabia, how I look at Motion Arabia. Yep. And your, um, your, your content shows it, by the way. It shows that everything is perfectly streamlined and you're, you're all doing something to reach one, one purpose. 
Yes. So if you have, if you haven't guys watched their videos before, you know that these guys just take a car, go on a ridiculous road trip somewhere, and film exciting them, videos. Have fun along yes. the way it's, and record yeah. beautiful content. And, and yeah, and and the main thing that I like about your content as well that when you watch it for different cars, you feel that you enjoy every car, whatever yeah. it is. And you enjoy the trip with it as well. So that moves us to, your, to the next question I want to ask you guys. And you might have different answers or the same answer. What is the most exciting trip you took with a car uh, to film it? Uh, so uh, where should um, I start? Uh, look, who, who remembers? The, <clears throat> this, is very, this is a very hard question because, you know, the, the real conversation that we have in Motion Arabia, hi, guys, uh, you know, we have like a... Ayaras, how can we make this so exciting? Like beyond exciting. <laughs> this is the, uh, so every time we get an, like a, w whether it's an economy car or a super exciting car, first question is how exciting can we make it? Uh, for me, I don't know. Every trip was amazing. I mean, we did a couple of Nismos, Ab Jabal Hafid. We did all yeah. over the country with uh, different vans. We did with the G Class. We did. Uh, multiple cars from the same manufacturer like Audi we went on a two-day trip or one-day trip I forgot but it was like multiple stops um, yeah. Nissan I don't know Ahmed help me out what's, what's the most exciting trip you had <laughs> Saraha, Saraha, all of them but what I can think right now is like the uh, the uh, Suihan trip for Cadillac uh, with the Cadillacs yes it was, mm. yes so okay. it was one of that, that wasn't, just, just to clarify something, the thing that Ahmed's going to talk about, it was, it was actually a job we had for Cadillac. But the cool thing is, we ended up going to Suihan back to back, and it's like an hour and a half drive from Dubai, yeah? yeah. Mm. We're going, going to Suihan back to back every weekend, and we spent two to three days, we were shooting the cars there. And we always had an interesting selection, like we had ATSV, CTSV. Uh, then we had Escalade CT6, so like the flagships, these yeah. sporty ones. So yeah, that was a, that was the trip. Mm -hmm. well, why, why was Suihan special for you, Ahmed? Well, yeah. So like uh, like I said, so it was in Suihan. So in the morning we had the, the filming, and at night so we had like خلاص we finished filming. We we need to relax. So we had the camping. We sat down. We barbecued. So there, there was the filming part and the, uh, you know, trip. camping. <laughs> yeah, trip part. And it was for nice. three days. It was every weekend, like maybe two weekends. Hamid, right? Two weekends? Yeah, two, yeah, two, two weekends. weekends. So uh, it was really fun. And uh, every, like there was a lot of problems, like with the barbecue and uh, the camping. It was very cold. Cleaning, before cleaning, the cleaning the cars in Suihan was a yes. disaster because they only have one oh, little oh, shop. And it's in the corner in the desert, not on the road. <laughs> so you have to clean the car and then drive it for like one kilometer per hour until you reach outside. By the time it's outside, it's dirty. <laughs> well, well I, I can tell you that me and Zaran, we have uh, like one of your, our favorite trips that you did. And he's going to tell you about it. The one that we really enjoyed was when you guys took the Nissan Patrol. Uh, both your videos actually with the Nissan Patrol. Both we really enjoyed both. One was the Shwehat Island with. Oh my God. You took the that was safari. that was a disaster. That was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed following that story on Instagram because it was a very real story of people going somewhere and getting in like in so that for, situation and what <laughs> what were they trying to do? So for those who haven't seen this story produced by Motion Arabia. Basically, we were in the office one day and this thing pops up on Instagram and Anas is like, hey, have you seen this? I was like, what, what is it? Look at them. They got the car stuck in mud like, <laughs> above the tires. It's like half the door is in mud. <laughs> what are these guys up to? So now no, we have you guys Let's, here, let's start with this it. question. Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pointing there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. I've, the problem is, it was such an embarrassment for me because you have to realize since I was nine years old, I'm off-roading. Yeah. So for me to get a car stuck, it's like, excuse me? 
<laughs> how can this happen? <laughs> no, but the problem is, uh, you, you know, you know how there's these new memes all for the gram. Yeah. Yeah. I just found a really amazing place to stop the car, and it would be half in the sea and half in the sand, and the sea is behind it, and the waves are hitting, and I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and to to be fair, I mean, I, I, can I can I be very critical about the car? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you can say whatever you want here. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but like the Nissan Petrol is, it's so underpowered, it's so heavy, it's so blah, you know, it's an icon, I get it, but everything else in it is really bad. So <laughs> I, thought, I thought that it's going to have enough power to pull itself, but it didn't. And then the moment it just got a little bit stuck, it was like quicksand. It was going down. And the problem is the, the tide was coming. The, the water was yeah. coming. We were, we were on low tide. So that means like in approximately four to six hours, the car will get submerged. And it's not my car, you know? I, mean, I, I was getting really stressed out. But yeah, we got stuck for like six hours. Uh, nobody was there on Shui Hat Island. Uh, we called UAE Rescue. Ahmed helped me with that. There was this guy uh, who came... Well, I was sitting at home, okay, relaxing, and this guy calls me, uh, Ahmed, we are in Shuihat, we're stuck, it's like six hours away. And, and <laughs> <laughs> no, at the end of the day, uh, so, so we, we, actually, the guy who came all the way from Abu Dhabi to help us, he couldn't actually pull the car because it was too heavy. And I was like, you know, this is how Motion Arabia ends. <laughs> that's it you know, we, the car gets destroyed and house, we are done for but uh, black miracle yeah, yeah exactly there was a miracle though there is this fisher he came with a tantra the chassis is bent the body is bent the tires are gone uh, the interior is the you know, it's like a just it's a, it's i would i really wish for nobody to see this he just came you guys want some help? Hello. One tug with the tundra, the car came out. Out. <laughs> so, uh, to was, Ota, was... please bring the tundra here, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that was the that was the that was the Nissan Patrol Super Safari situation. But then we had the the normal nice. We 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 called Nissan up and we're like, yo, as as Motion Arabia, we don't take one car. We'll take three of them. Give us the three new Nissan patrols so that we can, you know, make amazing content with it. And that was one of our <laughs> trips. It was actually one of the very few last trips before Corona. It was also, we had one of our guys, he traveled to Canada. It was also one of the last trips for him. So it was nice. Ahmed, he can tell you more about that. Yeah, so, um, so the Nissan trip, uh, it was a really exciting one. Uh, we had three uh, Nissans. We had one. Uh, we had two V6s and one V8. And uh, I tried uh, the V6, and Mohammed tried the V6 even. Uh, it, uh, so we went to Al, Al, Al Bidaya, right, Mohammed? Mm, Al Bidaya. Uh, uh, opposite of Al Bidaya. Yeah, opposite of Al Bidaya. So we actually went, uh, and the car. Uh, Mohammed, yes. You're saying? Yeah, it was, it was all through the desert, yeah, and we didn't use any roads. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was really exciting. We had three Nissans. We did a lot of content from photography, videography. We did some uh, social media content. Uh, it was one of the last trips for one of the uh, uh, one uh, one of the team members, Mohammed Zaini. Uh, he left to Canada uh, to study abroad, and. Um, we had the filming part, then we had the barbecue at night. Uh, Again, it was a... barbecue is key. <laughs> having yeah. having that's a relaxed part a, session. That's after... part of a road trip. What's the point of a road trip if there's no barbecue? Yeah, Every exactly. road trip we have to do, we have to do the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> but Even it wasn't, if it's, a, it wasn't the road. It wasn't a barbecue, by the way. It was full on. Uh, what was it? Machbus. Machbus. Biryani. Oh. Oh. Biryani. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was full on cooking. Yeah. It was yeah, cooking. cooking outdoors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had to cut the onions and we had to <laughs> do yeah, everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, now I like remember everything. That, that's a master chef uh, challenge, not a, not a trip. <laughs> you know, the, the, the fun stuff, the fun stuff is, yeah, I mean, one time we went to Liwa and we did the same thing. I always try to get a car for Liwa, you know? Mm -hmm. So we got the Land Cruiser and we went to Liwa with it. 
Ahmed was the chef. Now, it takes only one mistake to ruin the whole thing. <laughs> he, was, he was cutting something, and um, we were supposed to wake up early in the morning to shoot the car in the amazing empty quarter. Mm. Ahmed put spices or something, and the spices came back into his eyes, yeah. and he got blind. The, the food was ruined, and bear in mind, we are in the empty quarter. There is no other food. <laughs> and you're only vid- have, like, videographers <laughs> blind. <laughs> yeah, we have we have we have a couple of uh, Snickers, uh, two Mountain Dews, three Mountain Dews, and uh, yeah, that was the food. The rest of the food got destroyed completely, and then in the morning it was just like a disaster to go do anything with the car. So it was one small little mistake. Speaking of the em- speaking of the empty quarter, how the hell did you convince Mercedes to give you the G wagon to reach the border of UAE and Saudi? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is this is the this is the secret. You don't. <laughs> I was just like, uh, uh, I was like, do you have unlimited mileage on the car? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter. And Done. I went all the way from Dubai, Saudi border on the left, huh? Yeah. Uh, where is Sila? And then we went down, 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 passed by Liwa, and went to the three point, UAE, Saudi, and Oman. Oman. Wow. Uh, Honestly, I've, I, I, I saw places that I've never seen before. And that only, in all honesty, it really showed me and proved to me that how the G-Class has become an S-Class, you know, like relatively to the old model. The old model was yes. like... Hard and uncomfortable. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, basically, it was a truck, uh, like a luxury, but it's a truck, basically. Mm. Now it's you know, a proper it's, SUV. Yeah, yeah. No, at least at least now the 700 800,000 you're gonna spend kind yes. of makes sense kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before we move on like now that you we know that you're an off-road let's say expert since nine years old you've tried nissan patrols land cruisers uh, g-wagons jimneys which yes. would you like pick immediately to go for one of these crazy trips like immediately out of the top of your head jimny okay Jim, <laughs> jimny <laughs> by the way the jimny in arabic we call it the yarbu yeah the yarbu uh, is, this, is, is the small mouse yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, this, it's the small mouse of the desert and everybody knows that the yarbu is the fastest most efficient in moving and he can go anywhere and as fast as he can better than any creature the Jimny is the same. Like, you get into situations with the Jimny where if you get in another car, you'll get stuck or it will end up very miserably. But the Jimny is pretty good with a good suspension. And I have my Jimny, it has an engine swap. So it's decent, fast. I can do, I can do 120, 140 in the, in the straights, you know. So that's all I need. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, however, however. I have, let me show you know, them the videos, Muhammad. However, if money is not an issue. <laughs> no, no, no. For, forget about money. I have, you know when, you know how love doesn't make sense? Yeah. Human, human, love doesn't make sense. My love, my love is for GM. GMC Sierra. I had a GMC Sierra as my first car. It was from my father. Uh, I took it from him. Uh, and, you know, I modded it a little bit here and there. And for me, it was the most amazing thing you can drive in the desert. The GMCs just have so much torque. Their V8s are so reliable. Uh, generally, it's a very sturdy, very good, very powerful car for the desert. But it also needs you to be very careful because it was, I had the 2500 HD, so it was very long. Yeah. For the mini yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was a special order from Ben Hamouda, so it had a long bed. And the two ah. doors, so it was, okay. it was very big. Wow, huge! Okay. That that's a bit harder to drive, I guess, through like terrain, especially in the mountains and stuff. Uh, yes, of course, because of maneuverability. But end of the day, yeah. it was just super sturdy. It was just, I get out of the gyms and I go like, wow. What a beautiful car! <laughs> <laughs> that nostalgia, kind of nostalgia. Mm-hmm. I like Buicks for some weird reason because of the same yes. reason we all, when I was when I was a kid like we owned a Buick Century and I just like I love Buicks just for that reason because I remember it to be like 
comfortable and huge and and uh, I loved the way it looks because back then like all, all Japanese cars were like tiny and like you're on the road with this big huge Buick with big red lights in the back that stretch all across just like all new cars right now mm-hmm. <laughs> and I you mean, have the nice couches inside <laughs> it's a shame that they don't bring them here in the UAE even Acura you know yeah, yeah. oh yeah they there, there's a lot of cars that we're missing in the UAE that it's a shame they don't uh, bring. Um, I went I went to the US. I was like, I was just driving and wow. I, I didn't care. I was just like, oh, Buick. Oh, Acura. You know, like, wow. Why don't we have this? <laughs> yes. Why don't we have that here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a question to dealers, I guess. We have, I mean, either go get it yourself or... Except what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we don't have much choice. <laughs> like, uh, we, we started the video with, with something I, I really like, love about your, your uh, social media content, that whatever car you get, you make it look exciting. And uh, we, we, we thought up of a question that we wanted to ask you, that you took the Toyota Gran Via and made it yeah. <laughs> look really exciting. <laughs> Can you tell us more it about like, the, the thought process yeah. behind that as well? Okay, the Grand Vio was exciting. By the way, like in end of 2019, we got a lot of vans. We got the Grand Vio, we got the V250 Mercedes, and even the V250 Mercedes, we used it as a filming car. And there's a viral video that we have of somebody opening the door and coming out with a camera and like, it's very, I don't know why, because of our nature of being very team oriented, very family oriented, and this young vibe, you know, this continuous excitement, the vans were always a super exciting thing. Uh, what made the Grand Prix exciting? Because we took it on a, on a big road trip. We stayed over in Fujairah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that by itself, if it's not so exciting, it's close to the heart or it's nice you know people want to see that people want to imagine themselves going on a trip with friends yeah yeah no but i mean like vans here in the uae especially like always have this i don't know stigma related to them it's more of a a driver for a big family or a, a mom with a big family so for young people to be to think of a van to begin with it's it's a bit hard i guess that's why you find them driving mostly like big suvs instead right yep i mean stigmas are always going to be there that's the problem so but it's slowly changing that's the good thing um yeah yeah that's what i can say to be honest so ahmed vans where do you stand with those um well i kind of i kind of okay why why do uh, why did i like vans is just because you know when we go out for trips or something with friends so that's why that, that's i i really don't like vans okay to, to my personal opinion I'm that's what i wanted to hear i'm an offroader i love going to the mountains uh, flying in the dunes you know vans is like very relaxing and put your legs up and the sleep and the, you know and so it, it was okay it was, the grand via was fun uh why because like we were like six inside the car can you imagine the, yeah. the, yeah. <laughs> the everyone's like shouting and there's the music going on and there's like a lot of things going on inside the car with seven guys inside the car okay so, okay uh, ahmed doesn't like vans because ahmed is an alone person he likes to be alone yeah. in the car. He doesn't want noise going on. But and I think uh, the, the, the COVID-19 situation is very pleasant for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, okay, honestly, honestly, I won't lie. I'm a, very, I'm a very social person. I love being social. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very, I, I really enjoy being alone sometimes because you know, there's always so much going on inside my head and, and being social sometimes kind of distracts you. It doesn't let you focus on some things here and there. So, yeah, like it's not too bad in this situation, to be honest. I'm good. Ahmed was really honest with that question because the next, yeah. one, next one needs a lot of honesty. Uh, uh. <laughs> Just before we, before we jump to the next one, look, with Vance, with, with Vance, I think, 
you said stigma earlier on. You said people yeah. think that vans are for the driver. And let me be truthful. Like, okay, before we were here in the in this region, we we're always looking at like the old Privia, old Odyssey, uh, maybe the old caravan. Was it Dodge Caravan? It's old, that's yeah. dying, by the way. Caravan, yeah. 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 There's the Kia Carnival. That was a bit... Uh, yes, around. sorry. That I, I cannot. Because Kia generally over here in the region, it is... <laughs> A driver's car immediately. I don't know why, but it's just like that. Um, uh, but all the new vans, Tara, they're more capable. They're more comfortable. I think they're more even like it's good to look at. You know, I'm not gonna look at the Grand View on the road and go like, or or, or the yeah. new V250 and be like, even though the stigma actually, in Abu Dhabi actually, for the V250. Yeah, one one of my favorites is the Chrysler, the Pacifica. Pacifica. Yeah, mm. yeah. We really I mean, it's, it's the Odyssey as well. We drove the Odyssey and we were yeah. wowed by that thing. I mean, there was so much power on it. It was brilliant. And, you know, then you understand why families in like other countries like in America and Canada and stuff like that, they prefer yeah. minivans so much more over SUVs. They just make so much more sense if you have a family. You know what's the sad part? What is the sad part is that the Toyota Sienna, the new one, the amazing looking one, it's not coming to us. Yeah, you just you like the Tundra. <laughs> yeah, so th that's, th that's really annoying because to be honest, for the first time, I think the styling on that car was like, wow, nice. Yeah, um, uh, I have uh, for all of us here in this call and for the people who are listening to us, if you are an off-roader like Ahmed and you want a little bit of action, there is always the Savannah. There's versions of it from GMC that come with 4x4. So that is my go-to van if I wanted a van. It has sofa seats. It has a full-on theater inside, uh, ambient lighting, uh, a very reliable V8, and a 4x4. I forgot, it's called the Star, Star, uh, Star Mobile. Okay. GMC Star Van. Starcraft. 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 That's a game. I used to play that game. No, that Starcraft is Starcraft. Starcraft. the go-to van for car oh, guys. No, there was, there was guy. Starcraft, by the way. <laughs> yes, but they bring them in two-wheel drive. Okay. Oh. The big Another ones annoying thing. Because okay. here they think of vans as like, uh, you know, uh, public transport, uh, company transport, all of that. They, <laughs> I don't think they sell them for individuals that much. That's why they're always go. But it is yeah. changing, like you said. Like you feel this market is starting to change here. Um, like my, my thing with vans is like I see a lot of people buy, let's say, a Land Cruiser here. I never take it off road once, just because he has a big family. It's like why? Why are you spending yes. all of that money on suspension and four wheel drive systems and whatever? When you can buy a luxury van, uh, your family is going to be more relaxed inside. So, yep. uh, again. Let, let's hope for more customization in the future. That's what we should aim for in the region, to be honest. Hopefully. 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 Okay, so yeah. the next question that we move on to that we require your honest opinion for is, have you guys driven any Chinese cars recently? And uh, what is Chinese. your opinion on Chinese cars? <laughs> oh my God, Chinese cars. Let, let's, let's leave Corona out of the discussion. <laughs> oh. Look, 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 look. Ahmed, okay, how honest can we be? You can be honest. As okay, okay we'll, start. we'll start, we'll start. We really like some of the MGs we've driven. I won't lie, some of yeah. them are nice in some yeah. ways. Some, some, some ways. ways. Some like, ways. <laughs> here, here's the thing with the Chinese. Like, gearboxes aren't their thing. It's like, why are you using those stupid dual clutches you're building? I, I, I grew up thinking that dual clutches were like performance, really quick shifting gearboxes that are amazing and should be in every car. Now I know there shouldn't be in every car because some cars don't need dual clutches like those. Please stop making those dual clutches. Let's go with regular automatics. That's for one. And like, there's a lot of other things that, like, you, I'll give you. I'll give ACs. you. ACs. <laughs> oh, we have a disastrous story with the AC. 
Oh my oh, god, so me. bad. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, what? I think uh, uh, it's this stopped. is working. <laughs> this is how we. Oh. Have, okay, thanks to to, to Zaran and Anas from Yalla Moitar. This is how we get blacklisted. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is how we, get wait, we 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 are blacklisted with three different companies from that country. So. <laughs> 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 Look, Chinese cars. Uh, Ahmed, do you want to start with your feelings about Chinese cars? The first, okay, should I, should I say the, the thing about ACs or? Uh, no, start with your general idea, then go with the okay. AC, because the AC okay. is just the, wow. General idea, like I liked that uh, Chinese, now MGs have the 360 cameras, mm. and uh, I like the, the, they have the thing, like, the thing that, it's like, there's a car, and then you can keep, you can see the 360 of the car. It was yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. Uh, like an the Audi. Small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the it's like the Audi. Yeah. It's not the it's not yeah, Audi. It's, like an, <laughs> it's not like it's like an augmented reality on the screen yes. where you can yes. move from one camera uh, to another, basically. Yeah. So uh, yeah, technology in Chinese cars are uh, improving and getting better, but uh, still they have like you know the small things <laughs> where the ACs, the gear, uh, they need to improve. And uh, yeah, about the ACs. So, um, Mohammed, <laughs> should I? <laughs> okay. Uh, once upon a time, uh, look, we, the, we 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 have a very nice, fair amount of experience with the, with the Chinese cars, and more specifically, MG. We tried all of their lineup, from the smallest okay. car to the MG6, to the MG5, to the HS, the RX to the RX8, the RX5. And the first thing that bothers me is why are they using the RX? RX8, I, I, yeah, I'm like, uh, I, I told one of the boys, uh, yo, we have the RX8 filming. He's like, Mazda released it finally or something? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, Habibi, it's, it's, it's a Chinese car. It was, very, it was a very bad thing. But um, there were a lot of stupid manufacturing mistakes. To put it very simply, very stupid manufacturing mistakes, like things that fall apart or buttons that don't work or a software that doesn't react properly. And one of the most major manufacturing faults we had was with a car that was driven only 30 kilometers. Ahmed went and picked it up. He picked it up, he drove it for like 10 minutes and then literally there was a waterfall underneath his legs. So I think one wow. of the pipes for the ACs yeah. or whatever wasn't connected. So he started the AC and all the water like and It was so bad. Like shower, my legs were showering. <laughs> Having a shower. It's uh, stuff like that. Uh, in terms of performance, like look, can, in all honesty, do, do you really think that Chinese cars are the cars that you can keep? It feels like a disposable, disposable plastic plate. Like you finish it for four or five years, it's dying. Halas. <laughs> That's what I feel. That's what everybody has been saying around me. My circle of people, car guys, non-car guys, everybody has the same idea about the Chinese cars. That it's a disposable <laughs> car, you know? And you can, I can see it. The moment I start pushing the car a little bit, like uh, cruise control for a very long time at 140 or something, start smelling funny, you know? <laughs> the engine doesn't start working you're right. properly. The you're right. They're not perfect. But if you think about it, I think this is something the brands, they're already aware of. I mean, mm. some of the Chinese cars, they have better warranties than the Japanese, the Germans. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember correctly, it's like six year, 200,000, some ridiculous amount, like something like that. So I think they're trying to build trust. But I mean, both Anas and I fully agree with you guys that they are not there yet. Be it on the I mean, no, no, they, they, have a, they have a really long way to go. But you know what I really like about them? That with the prices they're offering uh, here in the market or worldwide, they are pushing others to be better as well. Because let's speak about MGs, for instance. Like the price range in terms when you compare to what you're getting in the car on, on a list, as a spec list is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like when you compare it to the Koreans and the Japanese and the prices they're asking for their cars now, especially in our market, 
you start wondering, do these prices make sense? And you know that all of the components, end of the day, most probably they're built in China. To different yeah. standards, maybe, but like when you step into an MG, you feel you're in a place that is maybe 100% more like uh, in terms of quality better than you're at, at Toyota. And the MG is costing you half that price. Uh, that's true. And, and, and like, okay, we have like, there is already that starting point where we're like, ah, uh, Chinese, yeah, like, fake or, or bad quality or whatever. And we did have our fair share of, oh my God, this is really bad. But we did actually enjoy the RX-8. That was a pretty good, that, 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 was, that, that was a pretty decent car for the price and for what it is and for what it offers. And then there was the HS, which is basically that crossover. Yes. The well, amazing thing about the HS was the design. Yes. It was like, wow, okay. The seats were like, you know, there's no other word, but it was sexy. It was like, wow, oh yeah. my, what is this? Like a sports car, like a luxury car? You know, you yeah. don't, yeah. it's this weird vibe that you get that's very nice. And you, you, you can rarely get it even with some of the really high end contenders uh, American, Japanese, German. Some of their and that, are, that car costs what? What was it? Like 79000 for the full option. Yeah, exactly. Imagine. So, <laughs> I, know, I know one thing, though. I know Honky are really, are really killing it. I mean, I, I, I went inside a couple of... Uh, you mean Honchi? Honchi. <laughs> honky, Honchi, red flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's called red flag. And yeah, it means red it flag, means. yes. Yeah. So Red Flag, they had a couple of SUVs that I saw personally. I didn't drive. I didn't test drive, but I saw somebody who had it. And I, and I saw the interior. I saw the driving. I saw generally everything, even the software. I was like, hmm, now the Chinese car are starting to scare me because it will start making sense to buy the Honchi than to go buy if somebody is on a budget, you know, then to go yeah. buy like a car or, or something, Japanese I don't know. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what they're all about. They're just trying to give you a lot more for a lot less money. So, yeah, uh, this uh, unfortunately, of... our experience with Hon Chi was a it's little bit different. opposite of yours, really, <laughs> complete opposite. <laughs> I can see. Uh, I, I, was, I was just looking up Hon Chi just to, to know my models so I don't mess them up and I can see. There's these two guys, I think their name is Anas and Zaran. <laughs> They're standing next to an H7. Yes. yes. You should watch that afterwards. <laughs> you, should, you should watch opinion. that. <laughs> Blacklisted. <laughs> mm. I mean, but this is how, how new is the car? Oh, it's actually pretty new. Yeah, we drove yeah. it recently, like less than six months, I think. How was it? I, uh, let, me, let me explain it to you in one sentence. Wait Imagine... a minute, tell me. This is 2.8 million? No, no, no. Up two point eight million. No, but the presidential no. car is two point eight million. No, the the yeah. H nine, the H nine was it? The H nine is the two point eight. See, million. here's the thing with so, Honchi. The pricing is all wrong. Like just yesterday, I wrote an article about them making a new electric SUV, and the pricing they're going for. Wild guess. If you convert it from Chinese currency into dirham, the full option is going to be about four hundred eighty thousand dirham. Yeah. Uh, why would I spend 480,000 dirhams on a Honchi when I can drive a Range Rover? Or a, or a 7 Series. 7 Series yeah. are, or S-Class, they can come at the same price. <laughs> so, <laughs> their, their pricing is not there yet. And I think that's the biggest <laughs> issue that we had with the H7 as well. It's too expensive. It's just too expensive. Yeah. The technology is old. There's, it, it, we just didn't enjoy it at all. It could, it could, I mean, you're saying it could have been more refined. Way more refined. Way more refined. I, I think the, the H6 was one of their like, previous gens that they didn't have like that interior nice design that you're talking about or the tech. It was, it, basically, it was a, like a, a time machine. It's like you step in and you're in 1996. But with technology that's trying to be for 2020, <laughs> dude, it had 
the swing function in the in the AC vents from like <laughs> the nineties. That is very interesting. I, I, you know, I mean, okay for that, but I, I don't think I'm going to be paying 400 K or 300 or 200 for it was a swing 170, function. Which now. It, was, it was 170 for a sedan for like a, an A6 sized sedan, uh, which you know is too you, much. You know, you know, you know, you know what this, this, this basically, and I think the Chinese, you said, what do we think about the Chinese cars? Hmm. And I think personally, other than my personal opinion about like, MG being half amazing and half weird and Honchi is, oh, it's something that people should look at. I think the biggest challenge is the same challenge that arises from their target, as Anna said, which is they're bringing a lot more for a lot less. The first question, I think, for all of us and all of, our, all of the viewers is going to be, how much, okay, what can I get with that price? And therefore, does this car make sense? It's like an immediate response. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think you, like it's, it's the, it's the same way you think about like uh, Chinese mobile phones, for instance. It's like I'm paying so much less and I'm getting almost the same from an expensive flagship phone. Honestly, honestly, I would not do that. No, uh, like reliable uh, Chinese phones. Like the one <laughs> <I>, uh, <laughs> The one oh, he oh, owns. Oh, how are you? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, no, <laughs> no, no I, I, I was thinking more about like Dragon Mart, you know, no, those no, like no, 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 I, iPhones. No, I'm, I'm talking properly, like proper, proper companies. <laughs> okay, so now Anyways. that we've been talking about cars and how much they cost and to this, you know, value for money and all of that, let's kind of end it on a very personal <laughs> note. You know, you guys have driven a lot of cars, very different cars, exciting cars not so exciting cars. So let's say if you had 150,000 dirhams to walk into a showroom today and buy a new car, what would you get? It has to be brand new. It has to be brand new. Don't tell me I'll go on like a used car website and buy, I don't know, 10 Mazda RX-8. You can't do that. Yeah. Mm. 150,000. Ahmed, what comes, what comes uh, to your mind? If we do a hundred and if I go and I buy something less than a hundred and fifty thousand, the, re the remaining fine. money is for modification. For mods, of course, for mods. What else <laughs> okay. do you do with it? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> ah, Ahmad would say a brand new FJ. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm like, can I? Can I take? Hey, guys, you have you have a, a car on your website, right? On your Lamoita. <laughs> yes, we yeah. do. <laughs> you, have, do you have a filter, guys? <laughs> we have everything you want. You can just type in one hundred and fifty thousand, and you'll get results. <laughs> no, but we me. want we wanted an answer from the top of your head. So from the thing I don't you have remember. an answer. But look, my problem with everything is I always tell anybody who asks me, cars for me are like a candy shop. I don't have a, a favorite one. I could immediately yeah. jump and say, I'm going to go get the new Jimny, turbocharge it, make it perfectly amazing for the desert. Mm -hmm. um, and then that would be, you're talking about a 200 horsepower and a one ton car. Power to weight ratio is amazing, uh, practical, and the desert is amazing. And I could put camping <laughs> that would serve Mohammed Khalifa's purpose, his outdoor vibe, his practicality, the way he works, the what he does. But I'll be like, no, I could for 150,000, if I can go and get a good deal on a Sierra, GMC yes. Sierra, <laughs> okay. I would go buy that. I would go buy the GMC Sierra because uh, road trips, very relaxed gearbox engine, can go off road. It's uh, heavy enough to go inside wadis and push things and pull things and uh, yeah. pick up things. Uh, family and friend oriented, technology in it is amazing. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's up to date. At least, you know, um, those are some of the cars on the top of my head. Okay. What about and you, to, Ahmed? To me, I would get, uh, I would buy the, the GMC Sierra, but, uh, so, uh, like, okay, you know, FJ Cruisers, who who, people who drive FJ Cruisers hate Jeepers, okay? But, you know what, I have another 150, I would go for another Jeep, okay? I would buy a Jeep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, but uh, to me, I would uh, really go for a GMC Sierra. I guess it costs around 145,000, 145, I guess. Was this the, is this the 1500? 
No, no. Um, I'm not sure. Last time I checked in the uh, dealership, it's it's around one one forty five, I guess. And uh, yeah, I would go for a GMC Sierra. It, uh, I can go for off roading. I can go for uh, uh, mountains to the mountains, the road trips, and I would modify it uh, like, uh, huh? What? Tell me. MX five. Miata. What? Miata. This yeah. is now you're okay. talking. You're talking I, my I, language now. <laughs> yes, I love. Listen, I, first of all, kill me anything that's convertible. I love. I don't care. Oh my, that, that's you my know? boy. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know oh, this, this ugly, this ugly Fiat, the the one that they make memes about, the one with two headlights, like on two different sections yes. of the body. Yes. If this was convertible, yeah, yeah. I would buy it. <laughs> Sorry, Annie. So the Miata. And I, I've driven an old Miata. It's one of our guys uh, who's in Motion Arabia. He has a Miata. I drove Lucky it. And it's guy. manual. And it's a manual. Wow. wow. It's just tight. You understand that? It's, yeah. it's hard to get this tight yes. feeling in a car. Like the turns, like a, the, the gear shifting, everything. Yeah, it feels like you're sitting on the ground. Speaking of like convertibles, you just pressed the right buttons with me, man. I love convertibles. Every kind of convertible I love. And my favorite convertible, like a Roadster, was the Honda S2000. Like shame on you, Honda. Shame to stop producing that car. Like if you haven't test drove, if you haven't test drove an S2000, like try your best to make a video about that thing. That that red line. A, to 9,000 RPM, the tightness you're speaking about, the, the, the small throws of the gearbox, the short shifts, oh my God, it, that, that car was amazing. And I drove a brand new Honda S2000 when it was here available in the agency with Honda. Oh, and I was lucky, lucky enough to just, I was lucky enough to just walk into the showroom, show off my knowledge to the salesperson, about the S2000, that he gave it to me for three hours alone. He just made me sign that paper and I took it for all three hours of a test drive. It was a blast, blast. So, I, how, yeah. I, how can you guys drive a convertible in the UAE? It's I like, hate convertible. I'm going to put it out there. It's I like 50 days, days outside. Uh, <laughs> it was December. I'm sorry. It was December. So. Uh, December, okay. For three months, it's okay. fine. <laughs> I would no. be convertible for three okay. months. Okay, to be, to be honest with you, if, uh, look, uh, like, uh, no, uh, honestly speaking, <laughs> if you go to the mountain early in the morning, whether it's summer yeah. or winter, the weather is it's always, fine. always beautiful. Uh, and, no. and by the way, Ahmed, by the way, Ahmed, like, these brand new convertibles now, like, you can just turn on the AC and the air circulation with the roof open, it's fine. You can feel the cold air just flowing around you. So it's, it's not as bad as you imagine, by the way. For me, if okay. this is the convertible, never look as nice as the coupe. Like, for example, no. we're no, talking they hard do. Top. Hard top. No. Nissan, Nissan 370Z, the convertible is ugly compared to <laughs> the coupe. The 370Z, sorry, is a failure of a convertible <laughs> to a certain extent. <laughs> yeah. Compared to the other he, convertibles, he, it's bad. No, no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Zaran. When you speak about convertibles, if it's not built from bottom up as a convertible, it will look bad. Yes, the Z correct. was built as a coupe, and then they just chopped the roof off. <laughs> so it will look bad anyways. But like what we're talking about, me and Muhammad, like cars that are designed to be convertibles, and those look awesome. I have another, I have another option. What's your what? other option? Uh, the Ford Ranger diesel manual. Mm. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very controversial uh, choice, but I like the Ford Ranger because it was super light and the diesel was amazing in it. Uh, it's the only Ford that I like. I hate the F-150, by the way. I just don't you, like it. Speaking of big wow. trucks and weird choices, you guys drove the Navara as well, right? Recently? Yeah. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Listen, the Navara was the most exciting car. I swear to God, you know, it's, it's a really funny thing for people who who have test drives and and work with cars. It's usually the most weirdest cars that attract your attention. You know, like I yeah. get in a Lamborghini and I'm just like, 
يا 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 اوكي سو ذا نويز وات ايفر شيفتنج خلاص بس ذا نافارا واز جست I don't know how many thousand kilometers I put on that. It's just, I was like, you know, I loved it so much. So simple, so nonchalant, you know, like it's just yeah. a car with a, it's weird. I don't know. I loved it so much. It's so basic, yeah, yeah. which is why we both enjoy the Jimny so much. It's simple <laughs> motoring. There's no, you know, computers and sensors yep. and all of that. It's just... Simple. It's a steering wheel with 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 the with the gear. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, guys, I'm 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 using your website to find a, a car that I could get for a hundred and fifty thousand with mods, and I don't know. I'm stuck to be honest. But I, I said, GMC Sierra or a Jimny mm. or a convertible Miata, hundred percent. If or not the Miata, by the way, I would get a Beetle. The Beetle. Uh, has a weird vibe around it but i i tried the beetle when it first when, when it was with volkswagen and their test fleet and i, tr- I tried the convertible it's a 2.0 four cylinder turbo pretty nippy yeah uh, comfortable seating to a certain extent the back forget about it but it was nice and the, the last generation was a little bit masculine you know right. the old Uh, the old Beatles, they were a little bit feminine, but the new ones, they were a bit masculine. So I was like, you know, that's not a really bad option. <laughs> so that's another convertible it that could be. It is technically the same engine from a Golf, which is why it was so much fun. Yeah, the same exactly. The uh, DSG gearbox, all of that. All right. Then, but, then, no, but before we end, then I might suggest you try the Abarth 595 if you love that little car. You are lucky to try that. I didn't, I didn't... Uh, I didn't try it yet, and I think it's going to be a super fun car. That, that's the same experience you had with the Beetle. For me, I've always looked at Fiat 500s as like a female car, like a girl should buy that and whatever. So girly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. What, once you like drive that little 595 from Abarth, you just totally change your mind. And you want one. You just want one to have fun like at the, on the weekend for like half an hour, an hour, every, Every weekend, it's a brilliant toy. Brilliant toy yeah. for the weekend. I I I I finally have actually the the proper option. <laughs> Here we uh, go. For a, for a, if I had 150,000, mm-hmm. and I had to buy a brand new car, mm-hmm. and if I'm talking about me being a very sane person, uh, buying a practical car, but a sporty car, but a nice car, I would actually do the Golf GTI Club Sport. Good choice. Okay. Good choice. Be- okay. I was actually going to buy the Golf before I bought the Charger. Can you imagine? Look at the difference. Here. Okay. I- I'm going to throw a-, a curveball on you. With that money, you can get something better, which is the Renault Megane RS. Yeah, but uh, as beautiful as the Megane is, I don't know. Like, and, I- and we had it for a while in Motion Airbnb. We did some content with it. And even Ahmed, he, he-, he drove it the most. I don't know. Doesn't it doesn't appeal to me like the Golf for some reason. The RS. Did you guys drive the RS or the regular again? No, the RS. No, the yeah, RS. Anas and I were and in you, love instantly. Uh, uh, I was in love like, instantly. It, it's one of the only. It was one of the only cars that, after test driving it, I just can go to the showroom and buy it immediately. I just loved no. it. No, if you had if you had half a million budget or, or six hundred thousand. <laughs> No. Yes, we say we're, we're talking 150,000 budget, but like let's talk. If you ask us as the Muslim Arabia guys, what if in the future you become successful and you have a nice 600,000 dirham, 500,000? Okay, let's say budget. open, open budget. No, forget about like 600,000. Let's open it up totally and tell me open one budget. car and Ahmed, you tell open budget, anything in the world. Ahmed, let's start with you. Oh, open budget would, is hard because then you could take any car and you can stick whatever engine inside. Of I would get an FJ. Make it a long travel with a long travel kit, okay. Put all the modifications with the, the biggest cast. suspension, with the biggest <laughs> long travel kits, and like make the truck. Uh, man, I, I I love your passion and loyalty <laughs> for yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> But if I if I had an open budget, I would never think of a Toyota in my life. <laughs> no, I would pay like thousands for a long travel kit. <laughs> well, what about you, Muhammad? Open budget. Okay. What would you say? Now, now, I'm as I said before. I like all the cars, and I appreciate all the cars for who they are. But in my 
يعني 3 4 years of testing out all kinds of cars uh, and before the 3 years of motion arabia there was like also another 3 years i was doing something else and i was still taking test cars the only two cars that resonated and made me say i want to buy this when i become successful were two cars r7 or r6 whatever you choose because it was the perfect mixture of everything of the luxury of the practicality of the speed of the calmness of everything even to the software and to the music inside the car and just the dream of mine would be to have a, a bentley bentleys are overpriced but there is always this feeling that they have they're heavy on the road you know like th- there's yeah, always this yeah. different feeling about bentleys and it's always an icon and generally they have very good performance so i tried the v8 uh, convertible um continental and that was honestly uh i don't know the ultimate car in my head Now, obviously, if you're going to talk open budget, I could tell you, well, I'm going to get Sierra, long travel, da, da, yeah. da, da, and stuff like <laughs> long that. Long travel. It's, you know, it's, a, must. But, it's but, a must ticket, long yeah. travel. Once you get the budget, you just go long travel suspension. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, approach, I'm approaching the question in the sense of if I am successful and I have a lot of money, yeah, yeah. what would be one of the cars that I buy? Now, obviously, as car guys, I'm pretty sure all of us have, we want the, the toy, we want the daily yeah, exactly. we want the desert one we want we're going to do that obviously so yeah what, what zara and what about you in one one sentence open budget i wasn't prepared to answer this i need to think about it. like mohammed i'm not think one <laughs> i think you know you know my answer Anas's answer is going to be a Mazda, some sort of a Mazda. No, no, man, oh, no, no way. No, 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 that's on a limited budget. If it's an open cab, it's the Koenigsegg, Jamera. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Now <laughs> that you can enjoy, now that you can enjoy it with the family, oh, Koenigsegg. It's, it's you, you, you guys know cameras. It's the hustle blood of cameras. Like, if yes. I had enough money, I'll buy a hustle blood. And if I had enough money, Koenigsegg is the way to go. It's like, definitely for me. For me, I, I love the technology in a car to be related to the mechanics, pure technology with the mechanics. Forget about like software and audio and screens and whatever. And that's what I love about Quanixic. It's all about like the technology and the best you can get with tech when it comes to mechanics and, and that Jumeirah. And it's called Jumeirah, come on. It's called <laughs> Jumeirah. So, <laughs> I mean, look. And if, if we're going to talk like that, then the P1 is an amazing option. Yeah, the, the P1, yeah. yeah P1, P1 is, is, is a bit old, but it is still, in my opinion, the car of the decade to, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. It just came out of nowhere and it, it started this whole new generation of like the hypercars. Hypercars. Yeah. Or, or like uh, Kwanixik calls them mega, mega cars. Yeah, maybe they even cars. went to over all over hyper. <laughs> anyway, right, guys. So, Anyways, it's been wonderful chatting with you both. Great. We really enjoyed it. Thank you once again for taking the time. And I mean, it's always a pleasure to talk to other car guys because you just keep talking and talking and talking from where <laughs> to where we talk about Navaras and Koenigseggs in the same conversation. So, <laughs> 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 all right. Thanks a lot, guys. And just thank like you guys, uh, uh, thank you guys thank you for guys. hosting us. Uh, no, great no, th- opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great opportunity, and uh, uh, always happy to talk to you. Super friendly guys, super awesome, down to earth. And uh, thanks to your website because I've been talking to you, and I'm like looking into the website, looking for the cars during this conversation. <laughs> Don't forget you know, to watch our Hunchi video. <laughs> I, I, I have that by the way in a tab, in a tab ready, and I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it soon. All But right, guys. Take care. Thank you guys for producing more. the. Superb content that you guys do, and yeah. we'll keep enjoying it on social media. Yeah, just Sorry, keep doing you. what you're doing because it's great. And as usual, to our audience, keep safe, stay at home if you can now, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, see guys. You guys. Bye. 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 Bye.